Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the fifth webinar of the 2025 initiative in the series of the manifestation of the new civilization. Today, this is the fifth uh, webinar and uh, uh, our focalizing group today is from the United States, even though it's an international group, the Wisdom Group. And with this webinar, we will we continue our intergroup efforts to feature the shared vision of the new Aquarian civilization that is in the process of manifestation. For this project, we highlight the triangle of three countries that was uh, emphasized by Joel Kuhl as the countries that are responsible for uh, anchoring the new civilization. And it's the United States, United Kingdom, and Russia. Our groups that's been previously presenting uh, were the Universology a group from Russia, the Sandal House from the United Kingdom, the School for Esoteric Studies from the United States, and uh, the Trada group from Russia. So today is the fifth meeting. There will be the sixth meeting on December 11th, and then we will have a final synthesizing meeting on December 23rd during the festival week of the new group of world service. So let's bring our focus now to our meeting today. And I want to uh, welcome uh, Henry Guy to uh, introduce the group, which is a very unusual group, as you could see from uh, the introduction, from the announcement of the webinar. and. Uh, uh, there is no one leader, it's a group with shared leadership and so I will just pass the microphone to Henry uh, to tell us about the group and unfold our uh, process today, telling about what's and how will be happening today as it will be a little bit different order than usual. Hello, Henry. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining today. And I'm really grateful to your group and to your colleagues uh, for being together here and to share uh, with our audience about your group and the main thing about your vision. What is the vision of the new civilization? Well, thank you, Alexander. Um, so, as Alexander was saying, um, uh, we are not a leaderless group, but we don't have a single leader, and we do, we work by cooperative leadership, and we're going to be getting into that a little bit later in the, in the program. Uh, you can see up here that there's, a uh, the panel today is uh, Christine Carlson, Teresa Sinberg, Greg and uh, Sinberg, and Henry Guy. So maybe each of each of us can introduce ourselves and uh, just let us know where we're from. Uh, Christine, could you introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Henry. Warm sure. greetings to everyone here. I'm Christine Carlson, and I'm from Washington, D.C. And hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. I'm Teresa Zinberg, and I'm in Melbourne, Australia. And welcome to everyone. My name is Greg Zinberg, and I'm also in Melbourne, Australia. And um, the the group uh, is, you know, we 
Southern American group. I guess that's where it got its start. Uh, but it, we're, we connect with people all, and work with people all over the world, uh, mostly Europe, uh, North and South America, and uh, Australia. So, um, so I, uh, you can see the program here. We're going to have an, a short introduction and then an alignment, and then we're going to have a dialogue about the introduction and the alignment, and I'll be facilitating that part of it. Um, so uh, I live in Estes Park, Colorado in the United States, and um, just to let you know, when, when uh, Alexander invited us to present today, we, we immediately and just kind of universally among all of us saw this as an opportunity for group service. I mean, we saw that many experienced, talented members of the new group of world servers would join and here we are. So we're gonna approach this a little bit differently. Instead of a presentation about who we are and what we do and our vision, we want to just, the, the members that are here today, that everyone present on this webinar, just move into the sense of an extemporaneous group and by intention and become a group in service to the divine plan. And if we consider what that service might be, um, we could think about working together towards clarifying the principles and the ideas upon which the Aquarian civilization could be founded. And we could make these clarifications available to the many, many, many other founders of the new civilization. But here's something to think about. If we diligently and artfully wrote down these ideas and presented them in printed form, or we made a video and put it on YouTube, that would become our thing our perspective and sure it would be welcome by some maybe even be inspiring to them but it would also be challenged and opposed by others in a way it would set up its own pairs of opposites but if we presented them subjectively and presented them on the abstract mental plane and maybe the aspirational part of the emotional plane as well as the etheric planes they could be discovered and appropriated by the other founders operating in their respective fields like government and education economy culture science religion and business these clarifications are by their very nature insights. And you could think of those insights as attractive points in the field of consciousness that could be discovered by the founders of the Aquarian civilization in all nations and by all speakers of all languages. So we've been experimenting with a method of group clarification and presentation of these clarifications. And we found that group dialogue seems to be effective. In this method, we first align, and we're gonna start with that in a few minutes. And then we read some text aloud. And usually we do that from Lucille Cedarcrans' work or Alice Bailey's work. And then we dialogue about the text. So we regard this dialogue as collaborative in nature. There's no right or wrong statements. 
we see questions as valuable as answers. With each contribution, a building group understanding. Sometimes this seems like, you know, somebody's insight just sparks an insight in somebody else. It's kind of like a chain reaction of understanding. Um, but it, these insights are kind of based on uh, an intuitive awakening um, of what is underlying the text. The presentation part happens in the actual group thinking, feeling, and saying these clarifications aloud. A lot of times we can think of these as just being of the moment and having no effect. But in this increasingly seventh ray environment, we are getting the sense that these thoughts, feelings, and words influence Davis, maybe a new order of Davis. And that these devas hold these clarifications as possibilities for other service servers to invoke and invoke by their very need for them. Their kind of invocation of by just needing them. And when those Aquarian founders draw from these devas, they will be drawing them as their own inspirations, as their own ideas, and with their own inherent enthusiasm for it. And because they are invoked and discovered, they'll be far more powerful and appropriate to the actual need of any particular founder. For this group dialogue to work, we, and again, that's all of us present today, need to say what's on our minds and hearts. And it would be good to hear the voice of as many as possible, given the time we have available. And that's because each one of us has a unique line of relationship into and through humanity. And just some technical considerations. By design, everyone on the webinar is muted. So to alert the moderator that you have something to say, look at your menu and you'll see a little uh, hand. Uh, and click that hand icon when you're ready to say something. Not everybody's going to be able to say something, but um, the moderator is going to let one after another uh, on to uh, speak. And also feel free to ask the panel questions. But this is a whole group and feel more free to ask the whole group that is everyone participating today that the question. And in turn, feel free to answer the questions of others. It's not up to the panel alone. And even this, um, say you hear the answer that someone has given a statement someone's given, feel free to add to that if you, if you want to. Think of it as all of us together are building something. So let's start with the alignment. And uh, if you already have questions or comments, just hold them to right after the alignment. That's when we'll start the dialogue. And just a word about the alignment. Um, think of building and holding the whole alignment as we go. And by that I mean avoid dropping what we just aligned with in order to move on to the next part. Hold it as we move on. 
And another thing, all of us have a strong mental focus. And because of that, we could have a tendency to be satisfied with a concept as the reality, the thought as a reality only. I know this is easy to do because I do it and I do it a lot. So try to regard the words as something more than concepts. Use them as guides to enter into and participate in each part of the alignment. And remember that we're doing this as a group. So in this alignment, we'll be pausing frequently so that you'll have some time to do that. So let's get started. Become still in every way. Become fully present. Become present within your mental life. Become present within your emotional life. and become present within your physical life. In that presence, become aware of the whole of your previous incarnations. the myriad of families, communities, nations, circumstances, and activities in which you have ever participated. And following the thread of identity through all of these incarnations, recognize the extent of your full, long-standing, far-reaching humanity. Become aware of the devas serving as your vehicles in all of these incarnations. And extend loving gratitude to them. Recognize your collaborative service with these devas and the effect it has had on vast states and ranges of mental, emotional, and physical substance.
extend loving awareness to the substance you have touched, enlivened, colored, influenced, patterned, and forever changed. Holding that presence, become aware of important relationships you have had with animals. And focus on one in particular. Through that one, resonate loving identification into the whole of the animal kingdom. Become aware of relationships you have had with plants. and focus on one in particular. Through that one, resonate loving identification into the whole of the plant kingdom. Become aware of the intimate contact you have at this very moment with material forms, maybe the chair you're sitting in or the computer you're using, even the air you're breathing. And through them, resonate loving identification into the whole of the mineral kingdom. Become aware of the participants in this webinar as members of the world group. And recognize the world group as a purposeful field of relationship in which we live. See this field as vibrant and creative. And extend loving identification through these relations. See them. Feel them. Know them. Be present within them all. Viscerally feel these relationships covering the whole planet.
and know these relationships to be an agent of the divine plan, alive and awake within humanity. influencing every human circumstance and activity. And in this presence, find at the heart of these relationships, the heart of our greater life. And within this greater heart, become present within the Ashwaranic life. Participate in the Ashwaranic group rapport. as the relationship between the purpose and manifestation of the Logos. Participate in the Ashramic circulation of Logoic life, quality, and creative intelligence. From within our very Christ nature, establish rapport with and within the greater Christ life. and recognize our role as an agent of the grace of Christ. And find at the core of this greater heart, our essential identity, the spark of logoic fire. Through that spark, enter into the electric life of the Logos. And feel this purposeful, vital life surge through all the relationships we are presently within. integrating them. All living within all. Turn toward the avatar of synthesis. And on behalf of humanity, receive the offering of cosmic synthesis.
that synthesis to be lived and shared through all relationships. Participate in the circulation of this divine energy of synthesis within all kingdoms. And now become present within the whole of this alignment. And together, let's sound a single arm. Um, and now if there's any group dialogue on either the introduction or the alignment, then you can click on the hand, the hand icon on your menu. Barbara, you are unmuted. Oh, thank you. Well, I am still very much overwhelmed by this uh, alignment or meditation. Thank you very much for it. Uh, I hadn't experienced anything like that as far as I can remember. Um, uh, I don't know where you got the idea such an alignment, if you could maybe tell us something about that, because there are different alignments of the similar type, but this one had a distinct difference in the quality, I believe, and um, in the broadness of awareness that uh, we achieved this so beautiful i mean so many aspects in it um, so many details and yet the wholeness mm, or synthesis as you put it in the end thank you again well thank you um uh, this, um, I don't know, a few days after we were invited to present here, I was considering what sort of alignment we would do and, you know, something that was already prepared or should we make something up? And I just woke up one morning with the entire thing right in front of me. I mean, it was just right there and I wrote it down and, uh, What's interesting is I had to leave. Uh, I was 
going out of town for a few days, so I closed my computer up, and it wasn't saved. I thought it was being saved, and it wasn't saved. So a week later, I sat down and discovered it wasn't saved, and there it was again, almost the entire thing, word for word. So um, that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. Don, you are unmuted. Don, if you would like to contribute something, uh, please, you are unmuted. If not, then over to you, Henry. Okay. Are, is there any other, uh, any other questions or comments, insights? Um, Barbara, you are unmuted. Uh, thank, yes. thank you, Alexander. Um, I wanted to share um, something of the experience in that alignment. And I was surprised, uh, you know, this this idea of going in into the different kingdoms and in whatever, whatever way we can, um, aligning with and becoming aware of that kingdom, of that consciousness, of the David life. And when you said to think of a plant, I was surprised that what came to me is I have this aloe vera plant that I've had probably for almost 30 years and as I was going within I was feeling this water moving through and and it was carrying these minerals and there seemed to be every element fire earth air water as a part of this plant and this plant has given babies and I've transplanted them and shared them with others and I still have two but in that, all of the elements, all of it coming together, I had this sense of this idea of how all that which is is within us and all that we are as humanity is a part of and participating with and within all that we're aligning with about the higher that it's all inclusive. So I really appreciated, Henry, this meditation, this alignment, and to have the opportunity to go deeper within these kingdoms and with the higher one, and to experience it even a small amount, touching that, that inclusiveness and that union of a sort and how everything is included in everything else and if i may add something more i just remember what also struck me um, as being very special um, is when we became aware of the whole of our previous incarnations. I mean, it is quite an endeavor to even think of it. Uh, but, but, but somehow, sorry, but somehow it was it was possible to to get the idea or even some like flashes or I mean, really fascinating. And then. Um, you continued by saying that 
uh, we should become aware of the devas uh, serving in all the vehicles that we've exchanged during this long, long journey. And also there, there was a certain feeling, you know, the way of connecting with the Devic Kingdom, and as you, um, as the alignment went on with other kingdoms of nature, but even within the human kingdom, with the physical, astral, mental devils, I mean, as I said before, fascinating. I mean, what I think was the key, or the clue, or the main angle, I felt as if you've set certain root with the introduction, uh, as, you, as if you've, you've set a certain angle of how to approach this. And the angle was this holding the group consciousness as much as possible throughout um, the whole process. And I think that that was the key. Christine, you are unmuted. Please unmute yourself. Jeff, you are unmuted. Henry, thank you very much. That was lovely. I just wanted to say that and along the lines of that, that just comment we just heard, I was so totally aware of an amazing vastness of family, and I do mean the word family, within my one point in humanity. When you took us back throughout, as the last person said, our previous reincarnations, it was a point within a giant family. And I thank you very much. That was lovely. Perhaps uh, just because of time limitations, uh, we might want to move on to Christine's uh, presentation. She, she'll be doing some, she'll explain it, but she'll be doing something very similar to what we've done. She's going to be um, uh, working with this, with this text that's coming on your screen right now. And uh, and then she and all of us on the panel will help with uh, um, uh, facilitating the, the dialogue. So, Christine. Thank you, Henry. Um, I'm going to be reading um, the, this quote from Cooperative from Leadership, a book by Lucille Cedarcrans, and this section is pointing to um, what is possible in terms of the new civilization and the new form of leadership, um, cooperative leadership. This brings us to the next concept that I wish to project regarding leadership. He who would be a leader must first realize that every human being is a leader, that every human being has within himself the potential of leadership here and now, that that potential, that inborn capacity of the soul within the persona can be awakened and inspired into leadership activity within its particular sphere of influence. Any disciple who functions in a leadership capacity functions primarily on the first ray, that is, from a first ray mental focus. He or she may or may not be equipped with first ray insofar as the other bodies are concerned. 
he may or may not have a first ray mental body, but he is capable of a first ray mental focus. It is from this focus that he functions in a leadership capacity. The energy of inspiration is a peculiar wielding of divine purpose, of first ray energy. It is the first ray given a peculiar and specific directional movement. That is as far as I shall go in relationship to this at this particular point. So perhaps we can stop here and share our thoughts with one another about the concepts that touched us or that we have questions about in this first section. And I just invite everyone to participate in the same way that we were doing um, a few minutes ago with Henry's discussion. Hello? Yes. Okay, this is Tara. Thank you, Chris. Um, you know, I particularly resonate with this uh, text and it helps bring a lot of light to me because I have the impression that uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years since I have been involved with um, studying uh, Lucille Cedarcrans and, and the Wisdom Group, I uh, have the impression that the first ray uh, is coming so strongly in my equipment. And um, for a long time, was really wondering um, if it's in my mental body or if it's not. I still am uh, deciding that one if I have a first ray or a fourth ray mental body. But in any case, I I have seen that uh, first ray energy uh, comes very strongly as we are being in training for uh, becoming leaders. And uh, I think uh, you know all of us that we are uh, you know spiritual people, people studying the wisdom in the different forms, are trained to become leaders in our fields and, and probably leaders in, in future lives. So I, I think it's a very powerful, um, you know, text and I resonate very much with, with the information that it provides. Yeah. Thank you, Tara. Mm -hmm. Sure. Christine, you are muted by, uh, on your end, so please unmute yourself. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> I, I have a comment because with that focus, it must, it must resonate from the mental body to be most effective. And as we know, Ray 1 and 7 do have a unity focus. And seven, of course, is for the new coming Aquarian age. So as, a, as my focus has been healing, I find that when I try to give this information, it is not being received by others. And um, that was a difficulty for me. Now what the other person had just said, she's not sure where she is on the first ray. I know because I have done ray analysis that I am of the first ray. So there must be something to attenuate that when you are trying to work with others. I'd appreciate any comment. Well, um, I might bring our attention in the text that it's a peculiar wielding of the first ray and that it concerns inspiration um, so that the way we use that energy of the first ray through our equipment is to inspire others. And if I remember correctly, there's a real breadth of vision with the first ray. You know, I. It, 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 it's decisive and quick, um, but it's also open and full. Well, I could say I'm open. Is my mic open? Mm -hmm. okay. 
I, I, I could say that from the, the process has been to, to bring the second ray with the first ray, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to kind of um, uh, melt the first ray uh, focus and, and, and uh, intensity and, and purpose to just base it with, with love and wisdom. That's been um, the, the process uh, for, for all these years. Yeah. Are there other comments about some of the ideas in this section? Um, yes, my name is Spencer, and I, I do have some ideas about this. Um, I still look at this a lot through the eyes of the, um, the teachings in the Discipleship in the New Age books. And um, I do see a way that this can happen more with the first ray people as a triangular group or any group. The group you know, expands from triangle, but to start with the triangle, I do believe it takes one of the people out of those three people to be what you're describing very nearly the way I would put it a first ray mental type, although I would put that even on a personality or even a soul first ray coming through. And um, I believe there are ways that those people then can interact with the leaders who come more from second rays and the leaders who come more from third rays, in addition to the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh ray people coming into the group. But I do believe um, normally one of the people um, brings through or focuses mostly that energy in a way that is first ray and mental. And yes, it can use the, the first ray and mental energies in others to communicate, but I believe that that person has to find where they truly are their leader in the second and third ray positions especially, and then bring that first ray leadership, almost like a, uh, I liken it to a Moses or a lawgiver, bringing the law down, but when you bring the law down, you have to find out how the people can accept it. Therefore, find out how the second ray person can accept it and come out with this, I like to use the word synthesis, to me the group is a synthesis, a synthesis of first ray, second ray, and then for the same with the third ray person in the group, bring that to a synthesis of the first and third ray, and from that a direction, like you're just exactly like you're talking, comes for the group through the first ray mental type. That's uh, my input and comment. I do thank you for the time. Thank you. You know, I, I'd like to add to that just a bit. Um, I have for the longest time, because I, I spent a lot of time uh, with uh, Alice Bailey uh, works, uh, decades actually, before I got to, to Lucille's work. And, um, and I, I was convinced that the rays that were available to me were limited to the rays of my equipment and my soul uh, ray. And boy, since studying Lucille stuff, I have had to reassess that. It, what this is saying is that regardless of what the ray of the equipment or your soul ray, or even your monadic ray, uh, you, can you can participate in the rays, like this first ray mental focus, we're told other places that the First ray mental body is the is the ray of the mental body of the ashram that we're working with, mm -hmm. and it's it's as you kind of lift out of the specific use of rays through your own equipment, you can be used by the rays of greater groups or greater entities if if you want to. So. Anyway, just to say that, I've, I've kind of, I'm like Tara, uh, I've experienced that. So mm -hmm. it's, that's my interpretation of it. Um, if you don't mind a comment of mine on that. Um, I do agree with what you're saying there, and I, I wasn't you know going into the long version of the way I look at this, but yes, before getting to your real ray that you're going to manifest in the group, to me, you go through an experience of all the rays. You go through a progressive hierarchical experience of those rays, synthesize that then into your being and express it in the best way for yourself. Although because you have all those experiences, yes, at any time, anyone can use any ray. 
because to be at that stage, you have to have at least a memory like you talked about in your own alignment of all of our previous lives and experiences. Um, so that's just a little more comment on my part, uh, not to look at contradictions. I'm looking at the way that all this unifies into one synthetic system. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. John, you are unmuted, please unmute yourself. Oh, hello. hello. Thank you. It's it's very helpful to me because I too had labored under the impression that the only rays available to me were the ones that had already been expressed through my current personality. This gives me much food for thought, so I just wanted to say thank you for that realization that we can take on the qualities and characteristics of these rays in an ashramic sense when it's required for us to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it certainly points to allowing us to work um, creatively um, with all that is available to us and not from any place of limitation. Um, it's pointing to the wielding of the race. Are there other comments about the, some of the concepts in this section? Perhaps in the interest of time, I'll go on and read the next section and we can comment on that. I would like to come back now to the previous concept that he who would be a leader, and we refer now to the disciple who would function in a leadership capacity, must first realize that innate within every human being upon the planet regardless of his point of development, there is a capacity for creative leadership within his particular sphere of influence, within his particular environment. It is with this aspect of humanity that the disciple leader relates. He makes his relationship with the inborn creative leadership capacity of the soul within every individual whom he contacts. He sparks this first with the energy of inspiration and works then steadily to evoke this capacity, this creative activity outward into manifestation, giving always the other the freedom to express his leadership in his own time and place and way. This is the most basic and important concept for you to grasp, for you to expand within your own consciousness, to arrive at a better understanding of the humanity focused within every individual you contact and to embody in action. The leader always makes himself available to help to give aid when it is asked for. He never interferes with unwanted advice, but he does act in an advisory capacity when there is a need for him and when that need is expressed. Relate that which I have projected to the concept of cooperative leadership, expanding then your understanding of this concept. So I would invite expanding our understanding of this concept. It certainly points to the idea of the leader as the observer and as the servant of others. Hello, Christine, this is Greg. Um, yeah, what occurs to me in this is that there's a, a 
a, a sacredness about each individual's capacity to determine their own life and their own destiny. And I, I just had the, the, the sense in this, uh, in, in this teaching that the leader is, as it says, sparking the, the capacity for freedom within, within others, the capacity mm -hmm. for people to rise above their circumstances and to recognize that they are not, um, they are more than just their circumstances and that they're, that they can be more, uh, take a leadership role within their, uh, and determine who they are and what they are. And uh, it just, it just presents like a vision in a sense that <laughs> the the disciple is enabling the people that he or she is influencing to have a vision of themselves as being more creative, more potent, more um, uh, capable of of working within their circumstances than they might be uh, otherwise aware of. Yes, it's certainly the idea of empowerment of others, which let's, as we've experienced when we try to work in this way, when we, we do work in this way at times, um, that there's a greater flow, um, that the group and its creativity is greater than any one individual, but we call that forth from one another, that leadership, we evoke it. I have a question. How does this work in your group? You were all uh, dispersed around the world and uh, it's a very specific dynamic. Uh, I know it's through our own work in the 2025 initiative. So how this shared leadership uh, manifests itself practically? Would anyone else like to respond to that? Um, I can, but. Alexander, do you mean in our group or in the world? Uh, in your group, but uh, uh, if you have like, examples for like general examples, that like, would be mm -hmm. helpful too. If you can okay. give an insight for us to get the sense of that quality of that uh, shared leadership, what it is, how can we anchor that quality in ourselves? You know, um, the best example that I, I refer back to is what happened with uh, the initial part of the Arab Spring. You know, if you think back to who is the leader of the Arab Spring, you know, in Morocco and in Egypt and, you know, uh, there no, there's not one person stands out. It was just this sort of collective movement along a specific line, like it's saying in that first part, to just move together along a specific line and not be deterred. I mean, that to me is cooperative leadership. I mean, I know it didn't work out and, you know, the other kinds of leadership took over once the initial phase started, but but it just showed, it really showed me something. It showed me how this works. Yeah, and I think on a practical level, we do meet in person several times a year, but we work like this online, um, um, listening to one another and um, realizing that each person has a unique offering to make, um, whether we're planning an event or a gathering or working with um, some of Lucille's writing or the Bailey writing. Um, we work in this way. Um, I, I can add also that um, one thing that we, we always do is we start with alignment. Mm -hmm. So when we gather online or in person, um, everybody, we create some time for meditation or silence. 
and and from there we share impressions and those impressions normally um, uh, indicate what is going to happen that day because people start to bring the thoughts and um, you will see the correlations between what different people are are sharing and and it's just a, a process that takes its own rhythm and we have to work a lot with trust because we were much more scheduled and structured in the past we had themes and uh, you know people that were leading different things uh, every time and uh, you know lecturers and all that stuff and and more as we evolve as a group we have been working together for many years now we see that we actually don't need to schedule so much we just need to trust and be present and kind of download what we are receiving in the alignment not that we are you know downloading you know a book of teachings it's just our own personal uh, impressions from the alignment and trusting uh, that by sharing that you know every you know the, what needs to call somebody talking there uh, by sharing that um, you know everything is just unfolds uh, naturally Thank you. I'd just like to um, add to what's being said. Uh, in our group last night, we were talking about this very topic of uh, creative leadership. Uh, this is Julia in New Zealand. And um, it occurs to me the paradox of holding the focus directed uh, light along with uh, flexibility so we have structure which is useful for when new people want to join the group and we set a note just like Henry has done at the beginning and thank you so much Henry that was just um, awe inspiring uh, because what I feel uh, the gift of this uh, session we're having together is that uh, all of us, all of you, everyone, is uh, role modeling uh, as well as um, discussing uh, how we are doing what we are doing. Um, so I would like to just take this opportunity to um, thank the overarching diva that has inspired um, particularly the um, uh, the um, conversation you gave us, um, Henry, in the introduction, where the uh, note was sounded and the idea of freedom was underlined. Uh, because in this um, text that you've given us, Christine, thank you for that, um, I have a, a sense always of this enormous um, freedom, flexibility. Um, you spoke of, Henry, the electric current that runs through. Uh, which to me is enormously creative and, uh, if you like, gives us the um, juice for this um, type of creative uh, leadership that we're all um, uh, honouring in ourselves and each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, perhaps, I don't know if others uh, have their hand up, um, but perhaps in the interest of time, we should move on to the next quote um, that that Teresa has brought. Thank you, Christine. And I'd like to introduce a paper entitled Creating a Body of Wisdom. So once again, just remain open and receptive. And what we'd like to encourage in uh, working in this way is to align with the energy behind the words and see if we can reach higher in alignment to that frequency, to the, the frequency of the concept itself and see if we can actually intuit the greater meaning than the words that themselves convey. The function of the overall group life within the body of humanity is to provide the vehicle through which the influence of the divine plan for humanity 
can move the energy, force, and substance of that humanity into the activity of the divine plan in manifestation. How shall the group function? First, by creating with the energy, force, and substance at hand, a body of wisdom within the etheric network of the human family, which will, in its turn, move the energy, force, and substance, the thought life, the astral emotional feeling life, and the substantial activity into the activity of the divine plan for humanity. I would have you think particularly upon this concept. The overall group life over a period of several incarnations, but beginning now, creating out of the energy force and substance at hand, its own thought life, its own emotional feeling life, and its own substance, its own action. A body of the wisdom within the etheric network of humanity, which will, in its turn, move the energy, force, and substance of humanity, that is its thought life, the race mind thought life, its astral emotional life, and its action, that to which it gives substance, into the activity of the divine plan for humanity. This is the function of the overall group life in direct relationship to the divine purpose being focused by this synthetic, synthetic ashram. I have given you very briefly a new concept regarding group function, both in the larger sense and in the smaller sense. And if you will look for it, a new concept regarding your own service function in relation to that of the group. I see there is a direct relationship here uh, in what is being said here to our opening meditation alignment with Henry earlier in our session. And this whole coming together as a group in this way, the service potential that we render. And so in the alignment earlier, we were invited to reach down into the lower frequencies and infusing love and gratitude into everything that exists. And then we reach higher up in our alignment into the higher frequencies of the ashramic group life, Christ, all the way up to the avatar of synthesis. And so we were maintaining this alignment. And now as we move out into the verbal dialogue as we move out after this call into our day-to-day -day life, we are bringing the energy, force and substance of the wisdom all the way down through this group instrument and into our world and touching everything in our world with this higher frequency of divine purpose, divine love, wisdom, bringing it all the way down into every fiber of our being and out into every particle in our environment. So I 
that, that's what's touching me at the moment, but I would really love to hear from anyone else in the forum as to what you have been inspired by, or any thoughts or comments. Don, you are unmuted. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. I just wanted to point out how interesting it is that this next piece was actually kind of an answer to the question that was just put forward a little bit earlier about how we see the, the work of the groups uh, working out practically. Because you know we have all, all of us I'm sure on this in this webinar have been studying for many years, and we understand that we do have a connection to humanity, and our connection to humanity is the fact that we are a part of it, and so whatever it is that we change in our thinking, whatever it is uh, that we recognize and realize or are inspired by when we press that out into the body of humanity, we're making that available to all of humanity. And whereas we may not see that instantaneously manifesting in some kind of a particular event, I like to think that any time that I receive some kind of news or I see something on the internet that shows this idea of this more expansive view towards humanity manifesting, I can't help but think that this is a part of the result of our of all of our efforts as working in cooperation with the new group of world servers. Thank you, Don. This is Starshan. Oh, no. Anyone can yes, thank me. you, Sarah. Yeah. Hi. So my question is how do we create a body of wisdom that moves the energy force and substance that includes the thought astral and substantial activity of humanity if anyone had any comments about that because um, it seems like creating would be an ongoing process and that that it would come into livingness that when it when it creates movement it comes into livingness and the outcome of it can't necessarily be controlled because that wouldn't be the purpose of it it's that um like we were reading before inspiring that um inspiring the leadership using the energy of inspiration to evoke the leadership capacity in others. But um, I don't know, it just occurred to me when I read that, that it's this like ongoing process. And I wondered, um, yeah, if there were any thoughts about that. Does anybody have anything they'd like to uh, contribute to that? Only that I had uh, a similar sense to Starshine that the, um, the passage talks about creating a body of wisdom. And I was thinking, well, so this, the, body, the body that is being created is more than just a, a form. There's a, a, a living, evolving uh, presence within that body of wisdom and, and that the divine plan itself shouldn't be seen as a kind of blueprint, but more of a, um, a radiation of the presence. And, uh, and as such, it's responding, it's it's creative, it's uh, inspirational, it has all kinds of, of um, 
uh, um, uh, impacts that it makes when it moves through uh, a person or a group. So it's one of those, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's something that's hard to put your finger on because I think it's a moving target. I think that the, the body of wisdom is that radiation of truth that has been successfully moved from those higher ashramic levels and embodied by, by a group working to bring that divine plan into, uh, into proximity with, with the rest of humanity. Yeah, and I just... Oh, sorry. Go on. Yep. Thanks, I've Christine. Been, well, I was just going to say, we're doing that right now, mm -hmm. um, right? So we can continue that in all of our activities throughout the day, whether it's just because we're aware that we are a soul um, and we can continue it in our conversation at a dinner table or in a classroom wherever we go. Um, I think we're pulling these concepts down as we try to live them and express them. Yeah, thank you, Christine. And uh, those of us in the USA or in a few days are going to get the ultimate um, opportunity to do this. It's called Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> That's when all the family comes together and we have a dinner together and you know all the all the ways we see life and uh, religion politics so, you know that sort of thing it they'll all come together at this dinner and I think it's a it's a it's a time that we can we can embody you know participate. It, it sort of reminds me that of the movement that we went through in Pisces, it was generally a two-pronged movement. One was down into the very depths of, you know, science and, you know, every getting ourselves on the ground and making ourselves very comfortable, but at the same time, moving out of incarnation to holding the ideal and thinking that, you know, our mundane, physical, emotional, mental life was, you know, just keeping us from going to heaven. Uh, and this is, this is like when we combine both things. It's now we take heaven and bring it to earth. But it requires participating in life aligned, aligned with both. We're aligned, the, aligning the subtle with the very gross, the very uh, um, movements in, the, in our everyday activities. Thank you, Henry. I think what's really significant here is that he says uh, a number of times he refers to the energy force and substance at hand. And that this speaks so clearly to bringing the wisdom into the moment and every moment, whatever it is we are doing. And a big part of that, it relates back to Christine's um, paper, is this drawing forth the inspiration of each one we are in contact with, like to draw, draw forth the love, the compassion from all of those who we interact with. This is bringing this wisdom all the way down into the mass consciousness by working with every plant, every animal, every person, every experience with the energy force and substance of the divine plan moving through us. And it's in every moment with that which is right in front of our nose at this moment. Yeah. There are a few more hands that's ra uh, raised, and uh, I unmuted Jillian and Iris and Rose. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's 
Jill here. This is the first time I've uh, joined the group. It's been a lovely experience. The alignment was beautiful. And I now just have to uh, work on my difficulties with expressing my Ray One because I'm sure I've got Ray One in me. I've always felt I have. It's just I'm trying to ascertain my rays, and then I would love to join in this work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Something that's very important within our group is that um, we recognize that everybody has an important contribution to make and to go beyond our fears of saying the so-called right thing and expressing that which is just pouring through us in any moment. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Rose, uh, enjoying the conversation very much. And Starshine, her question um, sparked a uh, something I've been reading and contemplating recently. And her question was, you know, how do we, as a group, affect consciousness? And recently, my thoughts have been on that, from a quote I remember reading, that um, when a group of an, that is connected with an ashram is united in subjective link with linked subjectively energetically their thought becomes somewhat homogeneous and much more powerful and potent and in one of alice's friday night talks she says that part of the disciple is to become very sensitive to the ashram and when you combine that sensitivity to the ashram and the linking as a group with fellow ashramic members, you're like a lens that the that the sun can just, which in this case would be the ashram and the hierarchy, that whatever the thoughts are, are created become 10 times more powerful. And in that subjective work perhaps, and also objective work just through the thought life, it has a very powerful impact on the consciousness of humanity, which is relatively receptive to the thought currents of the day, sort of to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. Um, thank you. Thank you, Rose, for that as well um i'm i'm maybe my questions have kind of been answered already but i thought i'd go ahead and share them because it came up when i was thinking about it when starshine started talking and also henry alluded to the davis in the alignment but i was wondering about the other kingdoms like the the kingdom of the soul and the David Kingdom and working, if you could share any more information about working consciously with them, co-creating, because that's what we know in the future we'll be doing more of. But if you think about, I'm wondering if you think about this consciously or just whatever you could share. And thank you for this wonderful um, program. It's so thought provoking and um, enlightening and inspiring. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we don't have a great deal of time to um, go deeply into this because I think we're already just about at the end of our time. Um, Alexander, are we able to go a little over or are we at a uh, high yes. finish? Okay. Yes. yes, we can go a little over. Thank you. All right, so does anybody have anything they would like to say to respond to the question? I don't know who that was. It's Iris. Okay. Iris, oh. thank you, Iris. Mm -hmm. Iris, I, I would only add this, that um, um, it, it's in participation that we engage the David kingdom um, and 
you know, I, th I think it's, it's kind of been the case that we can be sort of satisfied with the ideal. And when I say this, I'm talking about our whole experience in Pisces. We can be sort of satisfied with the ideal and uh, building the ideal. But as we take the ideal and move it into action, like it's advocating here, that's basically what economy is, is, uh, is the manifestation. And as we move the ideal into manifestation and participate in that, we're actually engaging Davis. We have to. That's the only way it can manifest. And just recognizing it, I, I think it does add to it, though, if you recognize that you are engaging Davis when you're participating. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure that we, that the David kingdom is rightfully opened to us right now and that we can even say that we know what we're doing as far as that goes just yet, but just opening the door to the fact that that's the way it works, that we, that just by our very participation, we are engaging them. Yes, yes, that's, that's great. I just wondered if there was anything particular you were doing that we weren't aware of. Um, so you've answered that question. That's great. I also wondered, Henry, if it's possible you could include a copy of the alignment in the downloads or uh, send me a copy of it, please. I, I'm not sure how to do that. I'm sure Alexander will let me know how to do that. Sure. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, yeah, Henry, if you would share, uh, share it with me, I could include this in the uh, Whoever would be interested in send a request uh, to us, I will forward it. Okay, I'll do that. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, I'd like to now hand over to Greg. <clears throat> and sorry for all of those who were not able to share their thoughts. And uh, hopefully, we will continue in another format. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, this has been a, just a, such a rich session, and, and I feel um, honored to be able to offer the great invocation as a way to bring the group back together and to radiate the the uh, all of the goodwill generated by our discussions and our intentions out into humanity. <clears throat> From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. 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 
And so be it in divine law and order. So be it. There we go. Okay, well, that uh, concludes our presentation. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just so impressed by the uh, quality of the discussion and and uh, and the opportunity to uh, to present to such a group. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you, the Wisdom Group, for creating this body of wisdom within the ethers and uh, for us all together experiencing what is the manifested new civilization might look like and will look like. Thank you, and I want to invite you to join our coming webinars and uh, uh, I will start with the next webinar in this series on the manifestation of the new civilization. It will be the sixth uh, webinar, and uh, I made a mistake at the beginning saying that it will be December 11th. It will be December 10th. December 10th, and the World Goodwill, uh, yet another international uh, network that's anchored in the United Kingdom. Uh, will be sharing with us the vision of the future, uh, the future civilization. So please join us on December 10th. And on November 29th, in a few days, uh, please join the New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative, continuing the work with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This time we will work with the Goal 15, Life on Land. So please join us. And on December 11th, we invite you to join the Sagittarius Solar Festival gathering, where together, collectively, we'll now focus on the, the goals, setting the goals for our work as one united world group during the festival week of the new group of world service, also known as the Festival Week of the Group Impact, which will be on December 21st to December 28th. And among other uh, many other activities uh, during that week, there will be the final webinar on this uh, project, Manifestation of the New Civilization, when representatives of six groups will come together on December 23rd to reflect and share and meditate together, creating expanding the, the field of wisdom that we've progressively been creating together to energize and visualize the coming Aquarian civilization. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste. Um, 